Hi, this is Stephanie Sandbergen from the Bay Area, California office, and my lightning talk today is about seven testing principles. And the source of these principles in particular are from the ASTQB, and this organization has over 10 levels of certification available, test manager, test automation, security testing. Even if you're not interested in any test certification, it's still a great resource for testing. I also wanted to just mention quickly two great resources that I personally like. One is Rex Black. He has a consulting firm and his website has a number of articles and he does free webinars every month. You can go and see recorded webinars from the past also. And The Art of Software Testing was one of the first books that I read and it has been expanded for more newer technologies such as mobile testing. It's great for a new tester or even experienced testers. So principle number one, testing shows the presence of defects. So testing can show that defects are present, but it cannot prove that there are no defects. Testing reduces the probability of undiscovered defects, but even if no defects are found, it is not proof of correctness. So you also may not be finding defects because your tests need updating, for example. Principle number two, exhaustive testing is impossible. So I know we've all heard, why didn't we catch this bug that escaped into production? So all testing is sampling, since you cannot completely and exhaustively test every input path and combination, unless the program is very simple. I went to a conference on testing and they kept saying there is no silver bullet to find every bug in the system. But if you use appropriate testing techniques, you can reduce the possibility of critical bugs being found in production. Principle number three, early testing. Bugs found earlier in the process are cheaper to fix. This means testing should not occur at the end of the development process. Testing should occur during planning, requirements, gathering requirement specification, coding, test design, etc. And if a bug does escape into production, a good thing to do is to do a root cause analysis and find out where could we have found this bug earlier to prevent a similar reoccurrence. Principle number four, defect clustering. So defects do tend to cluster in modules of code. So if you know you are in a buggy area of code, you need to have a better sample of tests to execute. One good idea is to analyze where your bugs are in your application, for example, in your bug tracking system, and focus more in those areas. Principle number five, the pesticide paradox, which I know Scott talked about at a previous QA summit. So if you repeat the same tests over and over, eventually no more defects will be found because you've probably already found and fixed them. So test cases need to be regularly reviewed and revised to test more parts of the system. Principle number six, testing is context dependent. So testing is done differently in different contexts. For example, safety critical software such as medical devices will be tested differently from an e-commerce site. For example, BlackBot, if you are testing anything related to financial transactions, the types of testing you will conduct are different and bugs in these areas become very visible. Principle number seven, the absence of errors fallacy. So finding and fixing defects does not help if the system build is unusable or does not meet the user's needs and expectations. So this is related to conducting both positive and negative testing. Testing is ensuring that the product does what it is supposed to do, but also we need to test that it doesn't do what it is not supposed to do. In addition, it's a good idea to get client feedback throughout the process and every person on a team can question what we are building or the usability of it. And I just wanted to end with one final thought, just to think about what a successful test is. Think of the definition a little differently. So a successful test is not one that passes without any error or defect found. A successful test actually finds a bug, which then allows us to fix it before a client ever sees it. Thanks for listening.